And so we have to look at the newspapers. We have a couple of the online portals to look at too. We know that the issues have been dominating the headlines over the last 12 hours, and they come to a head as we look at them this morning. Mamavi, all in blue, looking uh, very elegant as always. I hope she is. Good morning to you, Mamavi. Are you in the up? mood? <laughs> Am I in the mood for what exactly? Okay. That's, uh, I'm that's in the mood right. for everything. Yeah, okay. That's good. Uh, so we have to do the newspapers. Absolutely. You slept well yesterday. As always, I, you don't get home early. don't have to tell you why. But. Let's do the Daily Graphic <laughs> newspaper. You don't want to know. Uh, yeah. Front page of the graphic. <laughs> Iyoko indicts former SNITS Director General. Three others charged with causing financial laws. So Mr. Ennis Thompson, the former Director General of SNIT, we've got a picture of him on the front page of the paper. That's uh, really the banner headline. I think the biggest news yesterday uh, was this. Uh, after Price Waterhouse Coopers presented their findings on the status of uh, SNIT to the current runners of SNIT and the uh, board chair, chair of trustees, uh, Dr. Kwame Adufour, receiving that 340 page documents, uh, but uh, also telling us that there are criminal proceedings uh, being led by Iyoko, and that's where the news of uh, some four persons, including a supplier, mm. have been indicted by Yoko. So that's what really is leading uh, the, the news stories on this. Uh, the angle that uh, the Daily Graphic picked, the economic and organized crime crimes officers charged four persons, including the former director general of uh, SNITS, Ernest Thompson, for willfully causing financial loss to the state. They are said to have questions to answer in connection with an information technology project, the Operational Business Suit, OBS, with costs, uh, which costs the SNIT 72 million US dollars. The other three are Juliet Hassana Kramer, the Chief Executive Officer of Perfect Business Systems, a private IT company, John Hagan Mensah, a former OBS project manager of SNITS, and Mr. Caleb Afaglo, a former general manager in charge of management information systems. I'm sure you remember him uh, because his name came up when this whole controversy about the system, the software system, uh, you know, when the conversation started because it ended uh, with his qualifications being questioned in the process. Uh, so this is not the end. Uh, a lot of news coming out of that. We know that Mr. Thompson has been, been talking. Uh, so we have AM Talk later mm. this morning. We'll deal with all the matters coming out from this uh, SNITS and the findings from the Prize Waterhouse Coopers, the uh, chartered accountants were charged to look at uh, you know, where SNIT sits right now. And they've come up with, they said they've identified some gaps, but they've also made some recommendations. So we'll do the rest of the story on the back of this yeah. uh, on AM Talk. Also on the front page, Ghana ready to beat malaria, President says at Commonwealth meeting. Uh, and if you know the story with the malaria, you would know that it goes way, 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 way back. And unbelievable, a lot of people still die, particularly children of malaria, every day. Figures are still very scary. And it beats my imagination that we still have to run off to the worst to seek for solution. We've been doing this for a very long time, by the way. Uh, but Ghana uh, is saying that we're ready. Story says that President Ekofuado has said the effective execution of the National Strategic Plan for Malaria Control as well as the introduction of other innovative strategies means that Ghana stands ready to beat malaria. Speaking at the Malaria Summit, London 2018, yesterday on the sidelines of the ongoing Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting, the president stated that the fight against malaria in Ghana was an old age one. Yeah, uh, so in 2016, 10.4 million cases of malaria were recorded in the population of some 30 million people. Uh, but you can read about it. The National Strategic Plan is here as well. Uh, you can read all about it in the paper. Metro Mass MD personal assistant to step aside. The managing director of the Metro Mass Transit Company Limited, Bennett Abwaji, and his personal assistant, Yadom Kesi, have with immediate effects been asked by the board of the company to step aside to allow investigations to continue. This story is on page 45. Uh, the board chairman of the MMT, 
Ahmed Arthur, who is also the member of parliament for Okai Kwe South constituency, has set up a five-member committee with institutional representation to investigate breaches of procurement more practices and bribery. So the investigative committee, uh, and it comprises uh, quite a number of people, they mentioned them. The committee uh, will formally meet on Monday to elect a chairman, uh, has up to three weeks to submit its report. Meanwhile, the security coordinator involved in the matter is still at post, but has been asked to cooperate with the investigation. What's the background? Well, the workers' union of the transport company last Tuesday petitioned the transport minister to demand the removal of Mr. Abuaji for full-scale investigations into his alleged corruption and procurement breaches. He's been accused of breaching several procurement laws in the acquisition of about 300 buses since taking over the company as MD about a year ago. So uh, there, there's more to the story on page 45 in the Daily Graphic newspaper. Uh, center spread, we've got some business story, but there's one more headline on the front page of the paper. Pay us 700 million Ghana cities debt to deal with filth. Uh, S. Patel's government, uh, that story is on page 16, before we go to the back page of the graphic. The Environmental Service Providers Association is demanding the payment of about 700 million Ghana cities owed its members by the government if they desire to rid the country of filth and make Accra the cleanest city in Africa is to be realized. Additionally, the association has called on the government to come up with a legislative instrument to establish a legal authority to disperse some 724 million Ghana cities uh, that has accrued from the taxes imposed on plastic products since 2011. Uh, there's more to the story. Uh, also, Citidia, uh, or C Citidia removes foreign label products from shelves. Uh, and Seth uh, Mokbe, who is a reporter <laughs> with the Daily Graphic newspaper, we've been reading his report. Constant like, pressure. This is, this is the <laughs> third day, uh, straight day, with this report. Uh, and we thank him. We thank you, Seth. On the back of this, uh, we've got... <laughs> We're dealing with this FDA matter thoroughly on our show today. Uh, we've got one of their bosses joining us for a conversation. And I think my first question, please, you're encouraged to send me a question. Mm. My first question is, why do you wait? Eh, for you to for, be prompted. Exactly. <laughs> why? Well, If the reporter sees it, it's an indictment if you, the regulator, hasn't seen it before the reporter. Yeah. Yes. It's absurd if you take a look at it. And uh, we're talking about how... Many of our state institutions or parastatals are always reactive instead of being proactive. Yeah. Because if you look at the various points mm. through mm. which the goods get to the final consumer, yeah. you marvel how they went through those tiny holes, so to speak. Because we're talking about goods being put on a container, mm -hmm. into a, a, on a ship, yeah. into a container, or Coming. through a container, Coming get through. to the harbor. Uh -huh. We have various institutions, uh, and I know you may have interacted, Ghana Immigration Service, Standards Authority, FDA, everybody's there. Yeah. SEPs. Yeah. Even the harbor authorities themselves are there. They, Nobody gets to see through. So they they go it. through various... Uh, uh, transportation mediums, they will be checked by the police, everybody on the road before they get to the stalls. Yeah. How come nobody gets to see you that know, that good in there is not good for consumption? You know, it's interesting that now we're even putting uh, the tax stamps on the products. Good. Yeah. Good. <laughs> we're putting the tax stamps on the products. Because product, we want to ensure. But we miss that. It just they actually don't qualify to be in the country. It just uh, make so, sense. Um, Maria Loveless Johnson, uh, she's the head of the Food Enforcement Department of the Food and Drugs Authority. She's been kind enough to, uh, to agree to be here on our show. So, we'll have a, a lovely conversation uh, later this morning. On the back page of the Daily Graphic, though, Hamza powers into allies to victory. Shaq's Mediama match abandoned. Chelsea hold Karakor. In Kumasi, my interest is the table, but hearts is still down there. Kotoko is a little above hearts, so I'm not going to go into it. Benedict would bring us sports later on this morning. Uh, Roland, that's it for the Daily Graphic. Which paper are you doing? All right, so I'm doing the Ghanaian Times. On the front page right. of the Ghanaian Times, we have SNIT OBS software scandal. Uh, it's 
Well, in the latest update is that, well, Thompson, four others charged for causing financial loss to states. We'll have a look at that on the front page of the Daily Graphic, so we'll move on. GRA clamps down tax stamp default. We're just talking about that, but I don't know. The GRA, do they check whether um, the product on, on which we needed to have those tax stamps really need have the right designation? No, that, that would be... Have the right information? No, no, that, that would be too Standards much. Authority. That would be too much okay. for the GRA. Right. They are looking for a specific thing. Okay. So they are focused on that. Yesterday they were uh, at Melcom. I'm not sure if it's just one branch or... Uh, but it no, was no. a Melcom okay. store. So what they did was products that didn't have the tax stamp take them off the shelves. Uh, and they said... This is the last time they're going to be this nice. The next time they come they're around, going they're, going to, they're going to <laughs> confiscate. They're going to just take the products away. So make sure that you've got the tax stamp. But I know some companies have still not sorted out. I mean, it's very complicated. It's not so easy for the companies. Why, uh, why is so, that? You have uh, because you have to buy a certain equipment to be able to do that. And if you produce... Is equipment that expensive? I, I hear it is, even though there is a way that uh, GRA is is dealing with it, you know, so... Um, they know, get some reinvestment in so taxes? So in, in terms of the payment, that's what they've said, that, you know, we'll help you... Who supplies the equipment? Deal. GRA or they have um, I don't know. outsource companies? I don't do. know. Okay. I have no idea. What I do know is that um, if your line produces so much, okay. I mean, the tax, this whole tax thing is going to either waste your time... Is it only time. for local producers? Um, no. So the foreign products that are coming through, the, the particular products that need this tax stamp, they do it, I think, at the entry point or something of, this, of the sort. So those that are imported, I've seen a few imported goods uh, with the tax stamp. Program. Okay. So it's only the, so those that are in the warehouses uh, that were in those places before the introduction of the stamp, now would they have to clamp down? Is that I'm not sure. I don't know. Because you're, I, saying I don't that know how you're saying that all goods from the ports need to be having those labels. So. Yeah. As in and I'm all thinking goods that coming through and those that are manufactured here, okay. if you meet, if, if you fall into those products that need the tax stamp, then you must have it. Right. I don't know at what point they do it with those coming in, but those that are manufactured in Ghana, you have to do it at and your manufacturing plants. So factory, that's where you need, exactly, no. that's where you need that system that right. can put the stamp on it. And if you're producing water bottles, small, small, small water bottles, this has to be done one, 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 yeah. on all of them, you know, so, yeah. and it's, so I know, I know it's a bit complicated for some of the manufacturing companies, but hopefully they'll be able to. Well, let's see how that goes. Uh, three yeah. ex-ministers report to CID and AMA locks out 25 staff for lateness. That's the story on AMA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I deal with AMA a lot. So I don't know. I, I think we shouldn't even be curious. reporting on these things. They are basic. Exactly. If you go to private companies, this is not. This is this won't be new. They dare not. If you if you came to work <laughs> in my newsroom uh, on a day when Elvis, our boss, is around, he would ask you to go back home. Yeah. Yeah. So it says 25 staff members of the AMA are in trouble for mm -hmm. reporting to work late. The workers who reported after 9 a.m. yesterday were asked to go home as management takes steps to sanction them. And the AMA head office has a staff of some 210, but only 100 were at work after a roll call was conducted around 8.30 a.m. And we know that um, Sam Ayedate, Sam Ayedate, mm -hmm. the coordinating director of AMA, together with other staff members, stood at the entrance to the office, took the names of all the late comments, and subsequently warned them to change their attitudes. Although, so they've been giving some warnings. You go to the back page of the... Roland, um, before you move on, guess where I, I heard our story of lateness and people being locked out on the BBC? Yeah. You mean Ghana? Ghana. <laughs> uh, this was the control, I think, control and accountancy general's department. And, and I was like, of all the news that we, we could send to BBC... This is what we are doing. Like, so now, lateness is a major news like for us in Ghana. Uh, no wonder the international media would also want to feast on it. Mm. I don't know. I think this is a lot of companies keep well, people out. All right. So we have uh, on the Ghanaian Times polls, uh, it's on the back page of the paper, stories on uh, football, Chelsea, uh, Kotoko drawing has uh, they got trash by Carola LC, etc. Mm. We'll see how it goes with the various football teams we have around. But yep. Mavi, we have to move on. You have a I've got the Daily Dispatch newspaper trying to retrieve your messages, so keep them coming through. 
uh, on WhatsApp and regular text message. The Daily Dispatch, Stephen and team exposes a Kufuado. President asks me to step down for Al Haji short, but he says he is not doing it. Uh, and it's not like, uh, to be fair, really, it's not like he, he, he organized a press conference and announced this. He was speaking to uh, delegates. He was speaking to his party people. But as it has become a new trend now, it's become a tradition, somebody would definitely record you. And before we know, uh, the recording is out there. So that's why this is out there. But he's not denying that fact. He said it in plain words, and I've listened to him uh, say that, yes, he was asked by the president to step aside. But he's been doing this for some time. If you've been following Stephen and team, I have. Uh, so uh, he's, been, he's been doing this for a while now. He feels that this is the time for him to be chairman of the party. He's competed with quite a number of people. Uh, Peter McMenu, the late uh, Jacob Bilante. He feels this is the time for him and he is not doing so. But he's also said something about his posters being removed and people coming to pull out Haji shots, uh, posters on top of his posters and blah, 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 blah. We hope that this does not take away from the main campaign, though. Uh, also, Kennedy, Japan cautions presidents about troubles in central region NPP. And then Quatsin uh, on the Fulani headsman. Uh, all you need to know behind Ghana's prison walls. Uh, so really, basically, these are the headlines in the Daily Dispatch newspaper. Uh, let's follow that up quickly with the Business and Financial Times. The Business and Financial Times front page, economy to grow by 5.7% in 2018. The lost talents, how Ghanaian graduates make a living in China. Your strength is in agri. invest in it. RMB, RMB analysts. Uh, you can read about this story in the Business and Financial Times newspaper. Uh, the Business Finder next, the Business Finder, front page of the Business Finder. Invest efficiently to service debts. World Bank urges African leaders. Lottery is critical in job creation, uh, according to a Jacob. And I wonder, uh, okay, so this is David Ofei, a Jacob. He's the executive chairman of Super 4 Intellect Limited, a little marketing company. And then growth in credits extension positive some of the headlines in the finder uh, that turns business on thursday so that's that's what we have on the front page of the business finder so they roland has got the daily guide yeah i've got the daily guide metro mass md fired I, I keep telling you the daily guide when they use such words when they use fired it means the person is fired yeah, it means that because i mean but what does fired mean fired mean you've been sacked you know the deputy minister, you know my classmate. I'm Good going morning to Google to you. Five. Pius um, Enam Hajide, um, the deputy sports minister who has been suspended according to a statement. The Daily Guide said he's been fired. I keep saying if the Daily Guide says something, take it serious. <laughs> and uh, this story, it says um, Metro Mass MD fired. And that is uh, on page, uh, I believe, six. Let me go to page six for you. So his, was his office backed or not? Um, I don't know about that. I don't know. You know I've, I've, heard a lot, I've heard a lot of things about, you know. But you know the interesting thing? That he was threat threatened, uh, blackmailed and all that. The, the point is but, that but whether, or not, but but whether, whether, whether or not your office was, was backed is not, a, is, is not, is not, doesn't become an issue when, when, goes, when, uh, when the, the content of what has been recorded public. It's, it's criminal. Of, it's, yeah, and <laughs> yeah. it's of public interest. And yeah. and and it's of interest to is relevant to whatever it is that you are alleged to have, have done. done. Exactly. So it says the embattled Metro Mass Transit Managing Director Bennett Abuaje has been asked to step aside. The decision has taken or was taken by the board of directors to allow investigations into several allegations made against him. And there's a copy of a letter addressed to him on Tuesday, seventeenth of April just two days ago, uh, signed by Ahmed Arthur, the board chairman, and copied to the Minister for Transport, uh, is indicated, and I'm reading to you, uh, because it's here in the Daily Guide. It says, I refer to 
The emergency board of directors meeting held on the 16th of April 2018, where the board held discussions with you on some allegations made against you by an employee of MMT. And based on the above, the board had decided to set up an investigative committee to investigate the series of allegations and give you an opportunity to respond to the allegations in order for the committee to have an unfettered atmosphere within which to conduct its activities the board has further decided that you proceed on leave with effect from that was yesterday wednesday the 18th of april 2018. you are therefore requested to hand over your duties to the deputy director <laughs> of operations yeah, 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 yeah. okay so we have snake boss charge over 72 million dollar scandal cutting tape to win a central region mpp uh uh, Kutin, Kutin. Okay, so good morning to you, Mr. Kutin. Uh, NDC begs Nana to drop double salary case. <laughs> We're on the platform. I'm already put this as a hey. <laughs> well, it's always good for us to take a look at what the issues are. And then we have um, Center Spread News One CNN's Christian Amampo angry at Ghanaians over Moisha <laughs> Budong. Manasseh Azure fires back. And so we've had some interplay with opinions. Uh, Christian Amampo, we shared her, hers, and then Manasseh Azuri Awene also uh, made an opinion on his um, page or his blog yesterday. And, uh, and then, uh, let me just see if I can quote. It says, Amampo, uh, and that's Manasseh, Amampo, if, <laughs> if you will be truthful to yourself and your conscience, you will realize that much of the condemnation resulted from her generalization and lies about Ghanaian women. And then uh, there's another quote from Manasi says, and if Moisha tells you she's afraid to come to Ghana, it is not strange. <laughs> Admittedly, the economy of Ghana is hard. People who would not want to make it the hard way will look for the least <laughs> opportunity to emigrate. Someone like Moisha, whose lifestyle is not sustainable beyond a certain age, has a good reason to look for greener pastures elsewhere <laughs> before her stock in trade expires, <laughs> before her raw materials sag and wrinkle. You can help her to resettle for those reasons <laughs> if, you wish to, uh, if you wish to do so and care. But Ghana is safe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I see. So we have other stories. The center spread news. One pull out the Daily Guide newspaper. Ghanaians don't have time to attack Moisha, DKB. And then we have filthy rich Ibra, one arrested, Ibra one arrested for money laundering. And we're told that this gentleman apparently uh, is a socialite. Uh, we're told he has massive cars. He's on Instagram, very popular. He's called Ibra one. And, uh, we're, we're, told, now we're told brewing. there's a video mm. uh, in which he was arrested by the police CID and he was crying. But he's a big guy, I'm yeah. told. Yeah. Yeah. We're, I don't know we're him, bringing so. another kind of lifestyle. I think we move from like celebrity to people who basically we don't know what they do. We just know that they live big and, <laughs> and they do big things. And like we're calling them this is socialites. This you, is you'd usually hear that when you're watching international media. Yeah, like and Paris Hilton. Like like Paris, you're, Paris Hilton you're watching E or something. Uh, in which she has a lot of inheritance. So, so at least you know her background. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but we've also seen the crop of like the, the Kardashians and other people. Mm. And now it's foot, foot, basketball wise, footballers <laughs> wise, this and this lives and people that are termed social. And now yeah. we're brewing that kind of crop mm. also in Ghana. Interesting things are happening. Oh, I, I have your text messages for some reason. I can't retrieve your WhatsApp messages. So please, for now, let's do the text messaging. Uh, when I get hold of your WhatsApp, I will share. So this one says, I pray that the work of Prize Waterhouse uh, Coopers will eventually improve or help improve the life of Ghanaian uh, worker on retirement. May God save Ghana. That's Jackman Evans. And this one says, okay. Um, how is Latif Idrisu? How far is the investigations? Hashtag, uh, hashtag justice for Latif uh, from Hello Richard in Akachi. Uh, Hello Richard, we will do something on Latif tomorrow. So I'll leave everything that I want to say right now. Let's deal with it tomorrow on the show, God willing. Walanyo in Akachi says the suspension of some officials of the MMT by the board is a welcoming news and shows the seriousness of President Ekufuado in fighting corruption. Hey, Bayo, how 
would you link this to the presidency? Interesting, but thank you for the message that you've sent. This one says, uh, God bless you for the good work. Okay. Uh, Peter from the Volta region in Quanta North, uh, Pasa. Uh, thank you very much for following our show every day. Kindly send me a text message. Uh, not WhatsApp for now because I can't get hold of your WhatsApp messages. This one says, uh, if you want to complain about these state institutions, my dear, you aren't going to finish doing that even in a whole day. If you check how much they receive at the end of the month, it is just mind-blowing. Oh, my God. Emmanuel hmm. Ejei Nensa Inoboas is sending us this message. And on that note, we'll turn attention online. Uh, and let's tell you what's on our website, myjawline.com, this Thursday, Roland. Yeah, so we go to myjawline.com. Ghana stands ready to beat malaria. Yeah. It's only Charlie Africa. Malaria is normal sometimes, but malaria is also what the West has because they know that at the end of the day, we will always come back. Yeah, we are here. But they know that we will always come back uh, and we would agree to a deal and they will promise us uh, to help us deal with malaria. So, this is also like a trump card for them as well. Yeah, yeah. it's in their interest that mm -hmm. malaria continues mm -hmm. to stay true, in Africa true. so that we always come begging for help. No, and then also their manufacturing companies can manufacture those drugs for mm -hmm. us. Yeah, we keep know, doing the research. We know there's one in the process. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 well, okay, let's finish. Off. It's like HIV never gets to finish. So, uh, anyway. because it's over Africa. forty years, yeah, because it affects yeah. Africa mostly. Yeah, mostly. So. As for them, they are safe. Mostly. Well, let's move on. Well, not the HIV. HIV is everywhere. It's everywhere, yeah. but I mean that in Africa, we don't have good But the point is that systems to... what kind of research are we also doing ourselves? Even when we have to research, oh, we have... we're relying on, on them to give us the funds oh, to carry v. out research. We That's have the great, truth. We have great That's scientists the from the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Nobody is arguing. They've Nobody been... is arguing, but why haven't we been able to? It's because of lack of Even funds. Even the malaria vaccine. Let's stick to what we, we, have, we haven't developed. Let's do them here, but Oil price worry. hits three year high of nearly seventy dollars a barrel. Yeah. Drivers have that been warned. Like they face misery at petrol pumps this year after the oil price rose to a three year high of almost seventy dollars. That looks dollars like trouble. So yesterday I was, I was going to buy four, and that thing was going, going, going. It was like a hundred and eighty uh, something. Then uh, I said, ah, say, you, you haven't finished. I said, ah, masa. Uh, I, I brought 180. But do you know what I say? <laughs> when, I, when I get to that point, uh, I think mine is 300. When I get to the point of getting two, uh, 290, then I ask. I remember the last time I had a... You're yeah, too petrol man. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> then you'll say, oh, uh, I want to petrol, won't he? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 the way I scream, he said, ah, Madam Minjaya, and then I said, oh, you're costing me and you're doing crap at all. All right, let's move on. So we have to brace ourselves. We're hearing because of the prices on the world market. Mm. 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 Where's Dan Kanamwa? I beg. As, as scavenging a means of livelihood and solution to filth in Kumasi. You can read about this uh, story on myjohnline.com. Uh, defunct Capital Bank founder Atu Essien released after detention. So Iyoko has granted bail to William Atu Essien, the founder of the collapsed bank, Capital Bank, after detaining him overnight. We know uh, some staff, if not all, they haven't received uh, their, their severance package. Uh, so there's Provident Fund in the middle there. There's the end of service benefit. Uh, and some of them don't have jobs. Some of them don't have jobs. So they're still waiting at home. And other banks are not easily employing people as well. So there's a bit of a challenge. Uh, with those who were laid off by Capital Bank and UT Bank because of the collapse of the bank. Because we know that GCB uh, couldn't take everybody in. Uh, so, yeah, so there's a big problem in here. Let's move on uh, quickly, though. Uh, double salary saga, Parliament uh, just come. When I saw this statement yesterday, I was like, okay, Parliament, where have you been? When did this thing start? Are you now coming to tell us to keep calm? This has been going on. How many people have... I've been going to the CID since uh, the, your your uh, your release came yesterday. I, I don't know. Now you're telling us to become. You should come with more. You know. All right. Uh, let's move on. Uh, okay. I won't disclose forward. subjects better, of discussion with the people. I think there should be more <laughs> proactive because this thing has dragged on for a while. And mm -hmm. if you wanted to settle nerves and say that 
uh, this is it, we're doing this, we're doing that. It should have come a, a bit earlier than it was released. That's, that's just my thinking. Okay, let's finish this. Uh, SNET board failed to ensure accountability in failed uh, $170 million project. So this is contained in the report, and I'm sure Roland will do justice to that because we've got the executive's uh, summary uh, of that because it's a huge 340-page report. Roland challenges May Macron blow man Trump to polygraph tests in Syria war. Uh, Jerry John Rawlins has suggested Russian President Vladimir Putin deserves applause for not heading back at a Western airstrike on Syria in the protracted conflict. Uh, and then MTT boss sacked to step aside over allegations or, or asked to step aside over allegations of procurement breaches. All of them stories, including Ronaldo, uh, saves Real Madrid with late equalizer. They only could draw yesterday. Benedict uh, will tell you how it went down. So other stories, including content on Joy News, uh, some of the videos uh, you might want to catch up. Uh, Miss G speaking to quite a number of people uh, in entertainment. So you can catch up with the videos on myjohnline.com. All right, we have to run. I had some uh, stories that I wanted to share. Uh, so let's do this. So Uganda, Roland, Uganda plans to tax social media to stop gossip on Facebook, WhatsApp, and Twitter. Yeah. How would they do that? Ah, <laughs> They're going to tax <laughs> Facebook itself. And uh, Twitter and the, the rest. Uh, the, I, I don't get, get it. Like, Please, let's scroll down. Let's read uh, at least just the first line. Uh, Uganda is proposing a tax on social media. Uh, social media using a bit to keep gossip online and to raise billions of shillings in government revenue. So starting July, President Yoweri Museveni's government wants to charge a daily price of 200 Ugandan shillings to mobile phone subscribers using services including WhatsApp, Viber, Twitter, and Skype. The new measures come after Museveni reportedly wrote a letter to the Treasury in March stating how idle talk on social media was costing the country much neither time and income. We need uh, this kind of levy, don't we? Uh, but this is not new if you've been following uh, uh, the Ugandan story. They are capable of doing this. They've done, yeah. they banned a couple of things <laughs> in the past. So this is one of the stories I wanted to share. There's also another story, uh, Patrick. Okay, uh, there's this issue about Zimbabwe sacking thousands of their nurses on strike. They are hoping, uh, really, to rope in, I think, about 10,000, if not more, of uh, nurses that have retired and those who do not have jobs uh, yet. But the problem is that mm -hmm. even those who are on strike who have been sacked, mm. they say that they were not enough in the first place. So people are now <laughs> wondering how yeah. uh, this could happen. But uh, Zimbabwe's government has sacked more than 10,000 nurses who went on strike on Monday in an apparently hardline attempt to quell labor unrest. Uh, so the vice president of the country said the nurses had refused to return to work mm -hmm. after $17 million was released to increase their pay. He chided them for not going back in the interest of saving lives. There are elections coming up in Zimbabwe, and mm. it is uh, being said that the strike was politically motivated, uh, even though the people were asking, uh, well, genuinely, they say, for more money. And they say the conditions of service also is rather very poor. They can't yeah. find gloves and basic tools that they need to work with. But now, you know, <laughs> they've also been hit. So we'll see how it goes down in Zimbabwe. Well, we know they have an election coming up in yeah, July. So exactly. the president, so, uh, what's his name? Managagwa. Managagwa, yeah. Uh, Managagwa. Let's do the last one. Okay, and it's a video. <laughs> what do you do? From News 24. What, yeah. What do you do when you graduate? You know, after you've graduated. But check this lady out. Uh, she graduated with a master's in uh, communication studies, I think. And this is it. This is how she did it. In grand style. <laughs> It's not a modeling contest. <laughs> she graduated with a master's in media, and this is how she marched on. Uh, okay, she's not done yet.
Japan. Which country is it? Oh, I'll go down. Yeah, country is coming up a little bit. Okay, let's watch a video right after that we go down. Oh, no, she's just going okay, up. Okay, let's okay. just go up. So let's go up. It's an African see. country, by the way. It's where, it's where, it's where, it's where. Oh, Zulu Natal. That would be in South Africa. No, it's not. Oh, okay. Um, oh. KwaZulu Natal is in South Africa. Is it? The University of KwaZulu Natal. Okay, okay, right. okay. All right. Okay, so. Okay, um, but I've seen the Chief Justice. Uh, like no, no, no. But they say she's like a bubbly person. Okay. She is. She's always. She's a boisha of the investment. No, she's not. You won't put her in that. <laughs> Don't put her in, in that zone unless you're speaking to Christiana Mampo. But she's like a happy go girl. She's okay, always yeah. a bit loud. Right. You know, so. I know. That's and, and she said she witty. was encouraged when she had. Her, her mate cheering her on. So she felt like, yeah, you're doing something great. You're doing something strap great. Strap it, <laughs> strap it, strap it. Okay, Work so it. Uh, so really pretty much that's it. That's uh, what we're bringing to you by way of review. Apologies that I couldn't uh, retrieve your WhatsApp messages, but I sure will in the course of the programming. Okay, and, uh, I, uh, I have this. This one reminds me of... Um, Music for you on GTV back in the day. It says, good morning to Reverend Sister Rejoice Sedega and Mr. Ameko of Akachi College of Education. This one is from Mensa Oklu of Hoga Clinic, Akachi. And then he adds, not forgetting Togbuyaho, the fourth of Akachi. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> not forgetting. <laughs> <laughs> I've got uh, a special birthday Mr. Mensa Oklu, good morning to you. A uh, special birthday to Abigail Anno. Abigail is at the Gimpa Faculty. Yeah, Law. she's there. Good morning happy, to you, Abigail. It's her birthday today. Today's your birthday. Yeah. Don't say what you usually say. Yeah. Stay with us.